I'm Kim, the Abundant Traveler, and welcome to the beautiful island of Sicily in southern Italy. This video is everything that you need to know before you come to this stunning island. From things to do, where to go, what time of year to be here, and the top tips for getting around, this video has it all. If you're new to this channel, thank you so much for stopping by. Make sure to click that red button below. That's the subscribe button. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for checking back in. So let's go ahead and get started with everything that you need to know before you come to Sicily. Sicily is the largest island in the Mediterranean and it covers about 9,900 square miles. That is about the size of New Hampshire. There are 5 million people that live in Sicily and it is a very important island as it was one of the major trade routes throughout the Mediterranean. Well, not throughout, but from one side to the other. Most of the people of the 5 million live in Palermo, just over a million, and Catania, just under a million. Everything else in Sicily is quite rural or you have some of the larger cities, larger, like Syracuse, which has about 125,000 people. The topography here is quite mountainous and it has the highest volcano in Europe, Mount Etna, in the east side. Also on the east side, not only do you have mountains, but you have very fertile soil where you'll find um, grape growing for wine. You'll also find lots of lemons and olives for olive oil. The history of of Sicily is quite interesting as this island being such an important trade route stop has been controlled by many many cultures first inhabited in the 8th century by the Greeks it's been controlled by the Greeks the Romans the Carthaginians it's also been controlled by the Vandals and the Ostrogoths it's now Italy it has been an empire it has been a fiefdom it has been all types of things on its own a county and currently it's an autonomous province of Italy oh my god that was a lot to say that was really hard I hope I got it right so how do you actually get to Sicily well it's quite easy you can fly into the main airport in Palermo it's a medium-sized airport relatively easy to get through or you can fly into Catania as well there are a couple other smaller regional airports, or you can drive across from mainland Italy through the city of Messina. If you decide to come into the Palermo airport, just something to note, it is quite expensive in a taxi to get from the airport to the main part of the city, which is about a 40 minute drive. I paid 55 euros in a taxi to go from the airport to my hotel, so it's definitely something to note. Well, now that you have arrived in Sicily, what do you do to get around? Well, Sicily has quite the reputation for driving, especially in the city of Palermo, but I still suggest that you go ahead and get a car. The best way to see this island is sort of town hopping. The other way to get around Sicily is by train, or you can take an organized trip. But again, my suggestion to you is to hire a car. All of my videos are tips and tricks and hacks for places to go. But if you're looking for a little bit more in depth, make sure to join my tribe and join my email list. I've left a link in the description below that simply says join the tribe. Well, there's 930 miles of coastline and more than 12 islands that encompass all of Sicily. So going to the beach is definitely one thing to do. Something else to do is to see the Greek and Roman ruins and also to city hop. You can go to the east coast, you can go to the west coast, you can go to Palermo, you can see the Positano of Sicily, which is called Terramina. And if you're interested in seeing some highlights and some great cities to visit while you're here, make sure to check out my other video on Sicily. That is the highlight video of all the cities that I visited while I was visiting the island. So when is the best time to come to Sicily? Honestly, July and August, in my opinion, would probably be really miserable. I'm here in late September and the weather is still approximately 90 degrees. There's been only one afternoon of rain, but it has been hot and humid. So probably my recommendation is late September, early October, or coming in April or May when things start to warm up. If you come in December, the temperature is sort of low 50s to mid 60s, but in the middle of the summer, I'm talking unbearable. So now that you know what time to come to Sicily, let's talk about how long you should stay while you're here. I would suggest if you're just looking for a highlight trip to spend seven to nine nights here. 
That being said, there is a lot to see, but the distances between the major sites is maybe two to three hours of driving. So if you are interested, just bring a small suitcase and then you can go from city to city to city, just one night at a time, maybe two nights here, one night here, a night in Chefalu, a night in Marzamimi, maybe a couple of nights in Palermo, but if you're just interested in doing the highlights, then probably seven to nine nights. If you're looking for a deeper, more Sicilian experience, then I would suggest that you spend a couple of weeks here. With a couple of weeks, you can spend some time in the countryside, in the agriturismos, as well as at all the major sites and seeing all of the major ruins throughout the island. And if you're looking for a very unique experience, then I suggest that you take a catamaran trip for a week to the Igati Archipelago, which are the islands on the northwest side with Intersail Club. If you are interested in taking a cabin charter, which means you just have to book your room with Intersail Club, I have left a link in the description below with a small discount if you book with that link. Now that we have determined we're staying seven to nine nights for a highlights tour or a deeper tour for 14 nights, let's talk about the type of accommodation that you will find here. My friend and I were here for a week and we spent approximately $100 a night for a very clean, nice room. Most of the time we had breakfast as well. And for a hundred bucks, we were sharing the room, maybe 50 bucks each. I would say most of the hotels are very clean, very simple, not super fancy. And if you're interested in staying in a beautiful agriturismo, uh, we stayed in one in Chefalu and I have left the link in the description below for this gorgeous, gorgeous agriturismo. I do have a suggestion when you're booking your hotels. It is really charming and a lot of fun to stay in the heart of the old towns in these cities throughout Sicily. The only problem is, is if you have a car, parking is hard. Additionally, you are schlepping your suitcases quite a long way because usually your parking is way over there and your hotel is way over there. So I would suggest that you actually stay in hotels that are on the cusp of the old town. That way you have easier parking, easier to get in and out. And then you can just pop over to the old town for everything that you want to see and do and eat. Now that we're talking about food, let's talk about some of the things you have to try while you're in Sicily. If you're gluten-free, this place is a little bit hard because some of the favorites here are all glutinous, including eating ice cream inside a brioche bun. Are you kidding me? Granita is another thing that they have, which is sort of like a shaved ice with fresh fruit in it. That's delicious. Arancini, which is the fried rice balls. Again, if you're gluten-free, you can't have it, but every once in a while you can find an arancini that is gluten-free. Really, really delicious. They're famous for pistachios here. They're famous for tuna here in Sicily as well. And there are actually lots of places throughout Sicily that are tuna factories. Other things that they are famous for are marzipan in the shape of fruit, including pears and cherries and apples, marzipan. They love their sweets here in Sicily. They're also famous for an eggplant dish called caponata, which is served room temperature that is a little bit sour with raisins in it. Really, really nice um, to starter. Some of the pastas that they're famous for is a pasta norma, which is an eggplant pasta. They're famous for pasta with fava beans in it, as well as a pasta with sardines, like minced sardines in it. And of course, fongole, yum. And they do have gluten-free pasta basically everywhere you go. So as everywhere in the world, it's important to know not just the food you should eat, but also the meal times because you don't want to miss a meal, especially when you're in Italy. So breakfast tends to be about 8, 30, 9 o'clock and it is simple coffee with maybe a brioche and also some kind of sweet spread, whether it's pistachio or marmalade or a sweet ricotta. I'm talking sweet, sweet, sweet but so delicious. Lunch is typically from 12.30 to 2.30. You don't wanna miss out on a delicious pasta or caprese salad or caponata for lunch. You don't, again, you don't wanna skip a meal when you're in Italy. So make sure to go to lunch during the 12.30 to 2.30 window. In the middle of the afternoon, most of the cities are quite quiet. Things are shut down for the afternoon, almost like a siesta even though they don't siesta, it's just hot in the middle of the afternoon. So you wanna take a rest, 
go back to your hotel, maybe take a boat ride or lay on the beach in the middle of the afternoon. And then dinners, typically restaurants will open at 7.30, but they start filling up about 8, 8.15. And then dinners go through, I would say about 10.30 to 11 p.m. So 8.30, 12.30 and 8 p.m. That is the schedule. So you don't miss a meal while you're in Sicily. So something else to know about timing. Here in Sicily, the larger cities with all of the tourists tend to be open on Sunday, but closed on Monday because all the tourists leave after the weekend. The smaller cities tend to be closed on Sunday, which is typical in Europe. This sort of comes from the fishermen used to take Sunday off. And so Mondays there were no fresh fish. So a lot of the markets and everything were closed. So just something to note, be careful about when you're planning your trip, where you are and what you're planning on doing on a Sunday and a Monday here in Sicily. Now that our bellies are full of pasta, caponata and gelato and a brioche, let's talk a little bit about the shopping that you have to do while you're here. One, you have to buy ceramics. They are famous for their beautiful ceramics with these gorgeous light blue tones that are hand painted, just stunning. They're also famous for these two faces. It's a man and a woman with a interesting sort of myth story about he cut his head off or they, the parents cut the heads off of the kids. Anyway, quite famous to get these two uh, heads, vases typically here in Sicily. It's also famous to get the, the little face, it's a sun face with the three legs, which is the story of how Sicily came to be. And this face with the three legs is called a trinacria. I hope that I said that correctly, a trinacria. Something that's really nice to take to friends and family is Sicily is famous for its lemons and they have lemon scented soaps, lemon scented marmalades, lemon scented everything. They also have pistachio everything here as well from um, spreads and uh, minced pistachios, everything you could possibly think of can have pistachios in it. And what I found was really, really delicious is one night when I was in Faviana, which is an island in the Agati Archipelago, on the catamaran trip, I had a fongole that had pistachios in it. I'm talking, it was so, so delicious. So what do things cost here in Sicily? Well, the ceramics, you can pay anything from 10 euros to several hundred euros, depending on the artist and how intricate the ceramics are. Food, I would say a espresso will cost you between a euro to two euros, depending on where you are. Breakfast will cost you approximately three and a half euros with your brioche and your coffee. Lunch will cost you, maybe if you have a pizza, 10 to 12 euros. Dinner typically for main courses are sort of 16 to 22 euros. So by the time you have wine and a coffee and everything, you're spending approximately 35 euros per person for dinner. Also here in Sicily, they're not big on tipping. So if you're just gonna have a coffee, you can perhaps round up to the nearest euro or leave nothing. When you're there at lunch, you can leave a euro or two. At dinner, approximately 10%. They are just not huge tippers here, but of course tips are always appreciated. And being from the US, I always leave something. Everything else I would say is average for Europe, a little bit less expensive. And my understanding is, it's really inexpensive to actually live here in Sicily. So if you wanna move here, I uh, one of my friends that I met, she has a two bedroom apartment in Palermo and she spends 600 euros a month for a two bedroom apartment. That's pretty amazing. So that sums up everything that you need to know before you come to the beautiful island of Sicily. If you have any suggestions, recommendations, or any additional tips, please leave them in the comments below. I would love to know your thoughts and your comments can always be shared with everybody who watches this video. I am Kim the Abundant Traveler and I cannot wait to see you again in Sicily or some other gorgeous Mediterranean island. See you soon. Bye. Sicily is the largest island in the... Sicily is... <laughs> what shopping you have to do while you're here? I have no idea what I'm going to say now. I don't know what's called. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to get the name. I'm going to get the name. Hold on.